South Baton Rouge in the 1960s, a time of change, a time of struggle, a time of hope. Black and white images flicker across the screen, children playing stickball in the dusty streets, classic cars cruising down the avenue, jazz music spilling out from open doorways. This was the backdrop against which the story of the Bowtie Brothers unfolded. The civil rights movement was in full swing. Segregation was being challenged. The old ways were dying, but new ways were being born. The neighborhood pulsed with a nervous energy. A sense of anticipation hung in the air. The world was changing, and South Baton Rouge was changing with it. Life wasn't easy. Discrimination was a daily reality. Opportunities were limited, but the community was strong. Families looked out for each other. Music filled the air, offering solace and escape. And amidst the struggle, there was a vibrant spirit, a determination to overcome. The seeds of change were being sown. The fight for equality was gaining momentum. And in the heart of South Baton Rouge, Bowtie was getting ready for a party when the SWAT team arrived. They found a lot of money hidden inside his walls, along with drugs. Bowtie, the oldest, was a natural leader, charismatic and ambitious. He dreamed of a life beyond their neighborhood. DD, the middle child, was observant and thoughtful. Boo Motion, the youngest, was impulsive and energetic. They grew up in a small house on a tree-lined street. The streets became their playground. The civil rights movement was a constant presence. They witnessed the protests. The fight for equality resonated deep within them, dreaming of a better future. They were brothers and friends. Their childhood was a mix of hardship and hope. The 1970s brought new challenges to South Baton Rouge. The promise of the civil rights movement seemed to fade. Poverty and crime began to creep into the neighborhood. Drugs became a pervasive presence. The streets became more dangerous. Bowtie, always the ambitious one, saw an opportunity. He started hustling on the streets, selling drugs, making quick money. Dee Dee and Boo Motion watched their older brother's transformation with concern. But Bowtie was determined to make his own way. The lure of the streets was too strong. Bowtie became increasingly involved in the drug trade. He made new friends, dangerous friends. The 1970s were a decade of temptation and trouble for the Bowtie brothers. Bowtie's hustling eventually caught up with him. He was arrested and sent to prison. Inside, he encountered a different kind of education. He learned the intricacies of the criminal underworld. He made connections with powerful people, people who could open doors for him, doors to a world beyond his wildest dreams. He met a representative of a Mexican cartel, a man who saw potential in Bowtie's ambition and street smarts. They formed an alliance. A partnership based on mutual benefit, the cartel offered Bowtie access to a vast network of resources. Bowtie offered the cartel a foothold in South Baton Rouge. Prison became Bowtie's university. He honed his skills. He developed his strategy. He prepared for his return to the streets. He knew that he would emerge a changed man, a man with a plan, a man with the connections to make his dreams a reality. When Bowtie was released, he was a different person. He was more focused, more determined, more ruthless. He had learned the hard way he had paid his dues, and he was ready to take what he believed was rightfully his. The cartel connection changed everything. It gave him the power to transform South Baton Rouge, for better or for worse. Section 5, Rise of the Bowtie Empire. The early 1980s, the early 1980s saw the rise of the Bowtie Empire. With the cartel's backing, Bowtie established a sophisticated drug operation. He recruited Dee Dee and Boo Motion into his organization. They became his lieutenants, his trusted advisors. They controlled the streets of South Baton Rouge. Money flowed, power grew. The Bowtie brothers became legends. They lived a life of luxury. Fast cars, expensive clothes, lavish parties. They were the kings of their world. They had achieved the success that Bowtie had always craved. The streets buzzed with energy. Hip-hop music blared from boomboxes. The Bowtie brothers were seen as heroes by some. Robin Hood figures who redistributed wealth to the community. They provided jobs. They supported local businesses. They gave back to the neighborhood that had raised them. But beneath the surface, darkness lurked. Violence became a regular occurrence. Rival gangs challenged their authority. The police began to take notice. The Bowtie empire was built on a foundation of illegal activity and it was only a matter of time before the cracks began to show. The early 1980s were a time of triumph for the Bowtie brothers, but the seeds of their downfall were already being sown. 
Section 6. Escalation and Scrutiny The Mid-1980s The mid-1980s brought increased scrutiny to the Bowtie Empire. The police stepped up their efforts to dismantle their operation. Raids became more frequent, arrests became more common, the violence escalated, the streets became a battleground. The cartel began to exert more pressure on Bowtie, they demanded greater returns on their investment, they questioned his loyalty, they threatened his family. Bowtie found himself caught in a vice, squeezed between the law and the cartel. Dee Dee and Boo Motion grew increasingly uncomfortable with the direction things were heading. They urged Bowtie to scale back their operations, to find a way out. But Bowtie was too deeply invested, he couldn't turn back. He was trapped by his own ambition. The pressure mounted, the risks became greater, the rewards became smaller. The Bowtie Empire was beginning to crumble. The mid-1980s were a time of escalating violence and increasing scrutiny. The beginning of the end for the Bowtie Brothers. Section 7. The Fall of the Bowtie Empire The fall of the Bowtie Empire was swift and brutal. A series of raids crippled their operation. Key members of their organization were arrested. The cartel withdrew their support. Bowtie, DD, and Boo Motion found themselves alone and vulnerable. Betrayal became commonplace. Former allies turned against them. The streets turned against them. The law closed in. The Bowtie brothers were arrested. Their reign of power came to an abrupt end. The trial was a media sensation. The story of the Bowtie brothers captivated the nation. They were portrayed as symbols of the excesses of the 1980s, a cautionary tale of ambition and greed. They were convicted on multiple charges, sentenced to lengthy prison terms. The Bowtie Empire was no more. Their reign was over. Their legacy tarnished. The fall of the Bowtie brothers was a tragedy, a reminder of the corrupting influence of power and the devastating consequences of unchecked ambition. Section 8. The Aftermath and Legacy the aftermath of the Bowtie Empire's collapse was devastating for South Baton Rouge. The community was left reeling. The streets were scarred by violence. The dream of a better future seemed to evaporate. The legacy of the Bowtie brothers is complex and contradictory. They were seen as heroes by some, villains by others. Their story became a cautionary tale, a reminder of the dangers of unchecked ambition. The community struggled to rebuild, to heal the wounds of the past, to forge a new path forward. The legacy of the Bowtie Brothers served as a constant reminder of the challenges they faced. The story of the Bowtie Brothers became a part of the fabric of South Baton Rouge. A story passed down through generations. A story that continues to resonate today. Section 9. The music of a generation jazz, funk, and hip-hop. The soundtrack of the Bowtie Brothers story was a mix of jazz, funk, and hip-hop. These genres reflected the changing times the evolving culture of South Baton Rouge. Jazz represented the older generation, the roots of the community, the struggles and triumphs of the past. Funk captured the energy and vibrancy of the 1970s, the sense of liberation and self-expression. Hip-hop emerged in the 1980s as the voice of the youth, a reflection of the challenges and aspirations of a new generation. The music of the era became intertwined with the story of the Bowtie Brothers, a reflection of the hopes, dreams, and struggles of a community in transition. Section 10. Remembering Dee Dee and Boo Motion footnotes in a larger story. Dee Dee and Boo Motion often get overshadowed by their older brother's larger-than-life persona, but their stories are just as important. They represent the complexities of loyalty and family, the struggles of individuals caught in the web of someone else's ambition. Dee Dee, the quiet intellectual, found himself drawn into a world he never wanted. He tried to be a voice of reason, a moral compass for his brother. But he was ultimately swept up in the tide. Boo Motion, the impulsive thrill-seeker, embraced the excitement and danger of the streets. He reveled in the power and prestige, but he also paid a heavy price. Their stories are footnotes in the larger narrative of the Bowtie Empire, but they are essential to understanding the human cost of ambition and the complexities of family ties. Section 11, South Baton Rouge Today, Echoes of the Past. South Baton Rouge Today bears the echoes of the past. The legacy of the Bowtie Brothers lingers, a reminder of a turbulent era, a testament to the resilience of the community. The neighborhood has changed. New businesses have sprung up, New generations have come of age, but the memories remain. The stories are still told, 
The story of the Bowtie Brothers serves as a cautionary tale, a reminder of the importance of community, the need for opportunity, the dangers of unchecked ambition. It is a story that continues to resonate with the residents of South Baton Rouge, a story that shapes their understanding of the past and their hopes for the future.